Often depicted as Nigeria's commercial nerve center, Lagos is a land of hope for millions of people where government action is beyond mere intention. Lagos continues to undergo unrivaled transformation under Governor Babajide Sonwolu, showing that democracy is more than a word and development is more than a wish. Welcome to Inside Lagos. I'm Ade Doja. Salam Ade Ni. of doing business often depends on availability of good roads. Our next report takes a look at how Governor Babajide Sonwolu is making Lagos better with good infrastructure. Have a listen. The Lagos state government says the regeneration of eco network of roads and others across the state is a testimonial of its commitment to ensure every part of the city feels the dividends of democracy. Governor Babajide Sonwolu stated this at the Lagos State Government Ministry of Works and Infrastructure, formal commissioner of the upgraded and rehabilitated Ikoyi network of roads, which include Thompson Avenue, Milverton Road, McDonald Road, and Latif Jakonde Road. Governor Sonwolu has urged the contractor to prepare ahead to commence the reconstruction of four other roads in the area. Roll out your new caterpillars, roll out your graders, roll out your men, and ensure that we start reconstruction on Cooper Road, which is also called Femi Okunu. I can see that the excitement is coming right around. We're also asking you to move to McPherson Road, which is a very, very, very difficult terrain because of the various drainage challenges that we have on McPherson Road. And of course, if you're on McPherson, my GS member has requested for the all-important Onyikwa Biome Queen's Drive Road. You will also move to Queen's Drive to ensure that these three critical roads, if you can also deliver within the next 12 months for us, we will be happy with you. Mrs. Julius Baja, we know you have the capacity. So these three roads must immediately start. The governor also urged residents of the area to support the state government in its bid to develop the city by paying their land use charge as that went due. Given the incremental and the improvement in the value of the real estate in this corridor, we want to appeal to our citizens, especially on this corridor, that the only thing I will ask of you is our land use charge. Our land use charge is a small requirement which will make us be able to do a lot more for a lot of our citizens. And so I'm going to use this opportunity again to appeal to all property owners, to all residents in this neighborhood, to see themselves as partners in government, as partners in progress. Let us support your government to be able to do the needful. Special advisor to the governor on works and infrastructure, Aramide Adiyoye, says the 3,347 meters ECOE network of roads has a completion duration of 11 months. ECOE, as you well know, is the strategic property capital of Lagos and should not be left behind the Sonwolu's administration's urban regeneration effort and to develop a robust infrastructure portfolio across the length and breadth of the state. This summer commissioning is therefore in line with the decisions resolved to regenerate and connect more communities with sustainable roads in tandem with the team's agenda. In February 2020, Mr. Governor graciously approved the rehabilitation and upgrade of these four roads, which are very strategic because of their high bearing traffic capacity volumes. And in total, they have a combined length of 3,747 meters. Before commencement of rehabilitation works, 
These roads were in very deplorable states because of the failure of the drainage system. They were riddled with potholes and always flooded, thereby impending free flow of traffic. The resultant stress on residents can only therefore be imagined. Works commenced simultaneously on the roads in July 2020, and as a ministry, we kept faith with 11 months stipulated completion period. The scope of works carried out on these roads includes, but is not limited to the following, site clearance, scarification of existing pavement surfaces, right of way delivery, relocation of services, earthworks, provision of service ducts, construction of drains with cover slabs to serve as walkway, provision of cross stone base course, provision of 8 cm interlocking stone of 45 MPA strength, provision of street lights with power generating sets on low emission dial bulbs, replacement of trees and lawns. These roads, as you can see, are completed and readily connect the sprawling estates around the axis. Aside providing the access to several other roads, such as Alawali, Daudu Street, Rumens, and Noxton Roads, it's also a strategic link road to other areas within the heart of Ikoi, which helps traffic redistribution and ensures seamless, continuous flow of traffic within the neighborhood, thereby increasing the socioeconomic benefits. For this administration, I have no doubt that these road projects would hold considerable socioeconomic benefits for residents and those working in Ikoi, aside the job opportunities created. They will also reduce the traffic congestion and the reduce, the reduce the vehicular maintenance costs and the, reduce the travel time for commuters, as well as the safety and security in this corridor. We are thankful. We are indeed grateful. We are indeed happy with our governor, who, before he moved to that uh, White House in Lagos, was a resident of Ikuyi, Atile Latin Keshoro De, he remembered that his uh, former neighbors were in dire straits because the streets, the key roads that have been repaired in the last 11 months or so, so expertly by Julius Berger, were in a woeful state. We're happy that as he moved out, he remembered, and um, through the budgetary process, he, uh, he brought to being these projects. Before, it was a case of the rich also cry, with the coes, flooded roads, bad drainage, and so forth. Now, I can say, Mr. Governor, it is a case of what you have done for us in Ikoyi. It shall be permanent. Amen. The glory of God does unveil and over the fifth flag by Mr. Governor, the of Commission of Rules in Ikoyi, Thompson Avenue. The lawmaker representing Etiosa constituency too at the Lagos State House of Assembly, Bolan Oyishawu, says people of the area were elated on the urban regeneration of Ikoyo Valley on the Victoria Island and other axes in the state. So we are very happy with our governor for ensuring that our regeneration has started. You understand? We've done um, Thompson Avenue. Um, Milverton, McDonald's, with Latif Jack and Day. And we've been assured that they're going to do more. You mentioned Queen's Drive and the other roads that we're going to do. We are very happy, we are elated, and we're proud of him. As you can see, the quality of the road itself is good quality. Abi, don't you like the road? You don't like the road? Like uh -huh. like this is interlocking. It wasn't interlocking then, it was um, asphalt. And you know, over the years that broken up, the drainage was very bad. We can't even tell where the drainage was because the type of drainage that was used then was more like underground drainage. This is more maintainable, you understand? It's a different road entire. Now you have a pedestrian walk, which can also be a cycling lane. You know, it's, it's, it's a different road. And another thing they did was it wasn't a project that they started and lasted forever. 11 months, 11 months dead on they've delivered it. So the people's aspiration is being met and we're very proud. Many commend Governor Sonwolo's administration for its commitment for sustainable economic growth and development of the people of Lagos. In the next 18 months, the Yababa's terminal will be integrated 
with the red line Yaba rail station. Governor Babajide Sonwolu said this when he inaugurated the bus terminal recently. The new terminal will provide safe and quality public transportation here in Lagos. Yaba bus terminal project is one of the new bus terminals proposed under the bus reform initiative. Located at the former Yaba garage, this is to further meet the transportation needs of the people. Since Mr. Governor is an affirmed apostle of continuity, he gave the marching order for the completion of this imposing terminal. This Yaba bus terminal is one of the new bus terminals constructed with the objective of providing quality bus infrastructure with the support that will support the bus reform initiative of the Lagos State Government. This project is geared towards the provision of a safe and quality public transport infrastructure that is comfortable and reliable. The bus reform initiative is designed to reorganize bus operation in the bus transport sector in the state for effectiveness and efficiency. Mr. Governor had commissioned the Rubo bus terminal and recently the MMA Mafuluku bus terminal. Other terminals at Ifako Ijaye, Ojota and Aja are at different stages of completion, but we are optimistic that they will be completed before the end of this year. Let me assure you that we are primed to do more for the state by providing a world-class, multimodal, integrated transport system for the people in order to meet their daily commute needs. Buses from this terminal shall run the following routes. Yaba to Lawan Sinti, Itere, Jesha, and Sele. Yaba, Iyano, Ikaja. Yaba to Berga. Unila to Yaba. Ikeja to Yaba and to Ingo. Another milestone for our administration to drive to consistently provide ultra-modern infrastructure to meet the transportation needs of our people. Our vision to provide an integrated and internodal public transportation system for our great city, which will give our people a transportation choice and easy connectivity. The vision is clearly encapsulated under our team's agenda, where transportation and effective traffic management is the first and the number one pillar under the team's agenda. Any visitor, therefore, to Yaba will confirm the huge changes that has occurred in this particular location. A few years ago, particularly, where we're seated, we know what this place used to look like. No one would have ever thought that a magnificent structure of this size would be sitting here today as a bus terminal which we are all truly really proud of. However, this bus terminal has become necessary for the daily commute of our teaming population, and the government is proud to have facilitated and ensure the completion of this project. Yaba evokes a lot of memories, and I certainly have one. It's a major commercial, transportation, and entertainment hub. Commercial, market, everything hopes around Yaba. It's also home to various educational institutions. The famous University of Lagos usually take our buses from here. The famous Yaba College of Technology is also here. The College of, Te the College of Education in Akoka is also here. And of course, the future plan that we see at the Yaba and Sabo technology hub, which the state government is also leading to construct. We know fully well that we're commissioning a bus terminal today. We believe in God that another world-class terminal will also be handed over in 18 to 21 months by the grace of God. And here <clears throat> at Yaba, we will have the bus terminal that will be integrated with our red line Yaba train station. The train station will be somewhere there, and I'm sure after this occasion, we'll be going there also to see the work that had started in the construction of the red line train Yaba train station. There's an overpass 
that's going to take off from somewhere here and it's going to turn into Tejo Show Street so that as a train is coming, there will be a vehicular overpass that will cross over you know, the rail line that we have. The goal of this administration and our bus reform initiative is to bring our bus transport system up to par with what obtains in any part of the world. The initiative is a subset of our strategic transport master plan, the all-encompassing guide for everything being done to reform our bus transportation system. These are public infrastructure. These are the infrastructure that will make Lagos compete with any city in the world. And so we're handing it over to all of you. If you see something, say something. If you see any abnormality, do not hesitate to say something about it. It is your public asset. It is not for Jide Sonolu or Hamza or any of us that are here. It is for the public good. And we'll continue to say that it is the greatest number for the greatest, it is the, it is the greatest number for the public who will continue to do. We will not stop at it. And so I want to appeal to all of you. I want you to see that you are joint owner in this facility. Keep it safe. Keep it clean. Treat it like your own asset. Treat it like your own. Because we're handing it over to you. It's not about us. It's not about what we believe. It's about what you want us to do. It's about giving you the very best of life and knowing fully well that you will see it from that angle and you take proper and adequate care of it. Yaba features prominently in the Lagos State Transportation Master Plan because of its peculiar nature as a melting port of various commercial and academic activities that has recently metamorphosed into a tech hub. To eradicate maternal and infant mortality, the Lagos State Government has inaugurated another maternal and child care center. This time, it is located at the Epe General Hospital. Who were there? Epe Maternal and Child Care Center is the fourth to be inaugurated by Babajide Sonwolo administration in two years. This center has taken care of more than 500 pregnant women since it began operation on 19th of May this year. More than 100 babies have also been born within three weeks. Oluwa Funkedo is one of the mothers. She expresses satisfaction with the service. From dining till I conceived, till when I conceived, until my delivery, it was their staffs are wonderful. I recommend people to come to government hospital because they will attend to every of your needs. No woman or child should die from normal life enhancing process of procreation. Is the basis Governor Babajide Sonwolu is opening up these special centers across the state. The 110 bed maternal and child care center, like others in Etiosa, Igondu, and Badagri, is designed to suit the preconception integrated health services such as obstetrics, gynecology, laboratory services, and blood bank, pediatrics, and family planning. So I feel greatly fulfilled to be in a to commission a fully equipped maternal child center, a clear demonstration of administration's seriousness about the war against maternal and child mortality in Lagos State. In the last two years, we have shown great commitment to the improvement of maternal and child health indices in the state. This is the fourth in series that we're commissioning. Um, we've done one in Alimosho, we've done in Etiosa, we've done in Badagri, and this is the fourth one that we're doing in Epe, and I think Epe deserves a round of applause for itself. You remember that at the commissioning last December in Badagri, I reiterated the commitment of our government to the eradication of maternal and child mortality in Lagos through consistent action and smart investment. Our overreaching goal is to eradicate infant and child mortality in our state while our women must no longer die while giving life to a newborn. We remain unwaveringly committed to this goal, and this maternal and child center brings to total number of four 
that this administration is handing over to its citizens. We are not, we've not done yet. Our plan is to build additional maternal child centers across the state to improve access to expectant mothers and to best the pre- and postnatal care for our provide professional health workers using modern and state-of-the-art facility. I'm sure you are aware that we're building the biggest child hospital in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, which is going to be the new Massey Children's Hospital in Lagos Island. We're doing that. We're also building a brand new general hospital in Ojo local government. It's ongoing and we're going to deliver that. We're also building another hospital in Ketwe Jiri. Um, it's, um, it's, 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 it's an improved medical facility for um, health and mental issues. It's going to be a full rehabilitation hospital that is needed for our citizens right now. As we speak, we're renovating and we're revamping about six different hospitals. General Hospital Lagos, we're doing the same at Harvey Street, Harvey Road Hospital. We're doing at the Solo General Hospital. We're doing at the Butemeta General Hospital. And we're doing, I think there's a fifth one, maybe it's a Kurudu or somewhere. All of these hospitals, we want to bring them to top-notch facilities that will be second to none, where we can go in, receive treatment, and come out well healthy at the end of the day. As you know, health is a strong cardinal under our team's agenda. It's the second pillar, which is under health and environment. And healthy citizens build a healthy society, and by extension, it builds a healthy economy. We are laying no stone on turn to provide full equipment for modern health facility all around Lagos State. Where necessary, we will build brand new health facilities where appropriate, we'll renovate and upgrade existing ones. As you have noticed, we rest assured that all the parts of Lagos will be covered at one point or the other. The best statistics of this all is that there have been no deaths at this MCC. And that's in keeping with the opposition, Mr. Governor, to drastically reduce maternal and child death in Lagos State as an unacceptable indices for us as Lagosians. Governor Sonwulu also inaugurated the Emergency and Security Regional Dispatch Center at Okyosho Ekme. The station has the relevant security and safety agencies such as Fire Emergency, LASEMA Response, LASMA Ambulance Emergency Service, and Rapid Response Court. With this, residents of Ekpe and its environs will no longer wait for personnel to travel from Lagos Central during emergencies. There is also a magistrate court here under the Ministry of Justice. This centre will serve as a hub and as a one-stop shop facility for efficient and rapid deployment of what we call our first respondents. The seating of the emergency and security centre here in Ekpe Town will, among other things, create a lot of jobs, opportunities and employment for our teaming youths. Mr. Governor also inspects the ongoing road construction work on Lagos Ekpe Expressway from Elekoti Junction to Ekpe T Junction. Where we are currently is part of the three kilometers that have been completed as a bridge equipment two lanes for dual carriageway and a single lane for high um, truck, which we're going to put a wave bridge on. There are drainage at both sides, and there's also 1.5 kilometer walkway um, on both sides. Um, we're happy with the level of, of um, construction, as you can see. But the beauty of it is it has reduced journey time, even as it is now, from a very, very um, um, difficult five, four, five hours, you know, which typically take a 20, 25 minute journey, now is reduced to less than 45 minutes. You know, and you can see that um, there are no hindrance on the road. I mean, they have a massive right of way and there's free movement. But not until when they finish the entire, you know, road construction, would we have the full benefit of this investment. Um, so we are, we're happy with what we see. Um, we believe that um, they should be rounding up next um, end of this year or first quarter next year. <laughs>
and that's the package this week from Inside Lagos where every day is another opportunity to learn from the past and improve on the present and secure the future. Thanks for watching. I'm Adedoja. Salam Adini.